Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of There Goes Tokyo Remix. It is your host, Justin, and... Good old Merlin himself. Oh, Merlin, sometimes known as Joe in the mortal realm. And we are once again coming back with kind of a Kong theme. Uh, we kind of wanted to get out of it. I, I didn't know because of time crunches. We made it work, though. But we decided... We're, uh, we, we went back and checked. We were going to do 76 this episode, and then Peter Jackson's next time. So... Yeah, this episode, sure. we're going to be talking about King Kong, 1976. Yep. And remind me, Justin, did you do the plot synopsis last time? or did I, I did. Okay, dang it. I got to do it. Well, thankfully, <laughs> it's not too complicated. Uh, basically, it's a remake pretty much of the 1933 film. Uh, we have this expedition this time, though. Instead of trying to make a movie, we've got this guy who works for an oil company mm -hmm. and he's heard that out in this mysterious island which is basically skull island, island -ish, proper -ish. yeah they never actually say it but that's they talk about a skull so we know what it is yeah. and he's saying oh that possibly he, he asks odo who's like his geologist scientist guy who goes along with him on the expedition oh there might be oil here that we can capitalize on and i'll do well for the company i'll make a fortune and so that's the main reason for going there and stowing away is Jeff Bridges, who's like an environmental activist, mm -hmm. and he's like, oh, basically just going along to make sure they don't mess up anything and document things and try to be the conscience interjecting himself into this expedition. Sort of ish, kind, yeah. Kind of stowing away, and then they kind of, we'll talk about it, but it's like, they kind of like, oh, you're not supposed to be here, why are you here? And Okay, you're here, I, I guess that's cool. <laughs> yeah. And uh, on their way to Skull Island, they actually find a... Uh, castaway lady. Turns out she was a soon-to-be actress played by Jessica Lange in her first yep. film. Uh, wow. And uh, yeah, they find her and of course everybody on the ship falls in love with her. Particularly Jeff Bridges' character who saw her and so they have kind of a connection I guess. Uh, and they get to Skull Island and then it's pretty much what you'd expect. They come across the natives. The main guy doesn't think there's any issue. Find out there's Kong. They think he's lying. Reveal it's true. But then when they find out that turns out there's no oil there, and it won't be developed into oil for like 10,000 years, much to Odo's delight, drunken as he tells him, like, oh, man, you failed. This is a waste of time. The uh, company man decides to capitalize on Kong and captures him, and then it's basically the same movie. So More or less, yeah. More, more or less the same movie, um, and Kong goes on a rampage, pretty much what you'd expect. So, Justin... Um, I, I'll, I'll admit, when I was thinking about doing this one, I was like, all right, is there really going to be that much to talk about here? Because I remembered, I think I saw this one when I was very young, and, and I might have mentioned this before, I actually saw this one and, and never saw the original. So this was my initial experience First four, with, yeah. with Kong. Yeah, so, and I remember, I think, thinking it was fine, but I have very little memory of it. Um, I think there's a lot to talk about with it, surprisingly. Um I, 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 well, do you want to hear my thoughts first, or do you want to go? Um, why don't you leave the charge on this one? Oh, he wants to figure out what I thought. Well, um, I, I genuinely was liking it. Uh, okay. Uh, really, I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. Like, um, I was really impressed by a lot of the uses of a, a lot of the natural shots of the photography of the area, environmental scenery shots, also some of the sets, like, going onto the island mm -hmm. with the tribe. I thought that was very elaborate. Um, I thought some of the Kong effects were good. Um, Jeff Bridges was surprisingly good in the movie. I thought he might be phoning it in. I, I thought he did a pretty good it's job. It's kind of Jeff Bridges being Jeff Bridges, but, but I, I guess, he does that well. So, I, I mean, I guess I wasn't used to like seeing him so young. So it's mm -hmm. like, but yeah, this is Jeff Bridges is still doing a pretty good job. Like, okay, yeah. it's Jeff Bridges. Um, Jessica Lange does good. There's a lot of decent acting. Um, I, I liked some of the things it was trying to do, some of the things it was trying to say. But I had some mixed feelings about it. Not everything worked for me. And as the movie kept going, I realized... The tone's kind of weird. Yeah, that's... I, 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 it definitely has kind of a weird, sort of uneven tone sometimes. And the, the, when I watched the movie, I kept thinking, this is kind of the same thing, trying to do something different. And you expect more, mm -hmm. and you kind of get less. It's more concentrated. Bigger doesn't necessarily mean better in this case. Yeah, but the weird thing is it's not bigger in some ways. Like, uh, for instance, I, I guess just get the um, the big thing people are interested in out of the way, Kong himself. I will say, I'm thinking this is 1976, a lot of the shots look good. I was thinking, okay, this is some pretty impressive effects work. However, there are some shots where I'm like, okay, well, like for instance, when they try to match up her with Kong holding her mm -hmm. with some blue screen in the background, 
It doesn't gel. It actually doesn't gel. And I was thinking, wow, when they did this in the 33 version, it actually looked more seamless. Remember how I was so yeah. excited about that? Like, wow, when, when he's holding it, it looks so good. I'm like... This is like 40 years later, and it doesn't look it looks, quite as It looks good. worse, if anything. I'm like, how did they do that? And so so that was one issue. I'm like, okay. But I'm like, okay. That, all right. Okay, there was an issue there. And then I'm thinking, okay, but they still got some of the classics. Like, they've got the big robotic arm, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Some good animatronics on his face. They're superimposing with some forced perspective of a guy in a suit. But it's a pretty good suit. Uh, it's fine. But it's still kind of a guy in a suit. I'm not going to pretend like I quite got the illusion. But I'm like, whatever. Yeah. Um... So the special effects were fine. The biggest issue I had with, with it was, honestly, on the island. Remember how in thirty three it was so cool because the, how the dinosaurs and the big reptiles were the stars of the show. Mm-hmm. In this one, he fights a snake. Yeah, and it looks less impressive than it did oh, in the yeah. thirty three one. And I'm like, it's fine. It's a cool effect. It's a cool sequence. But like, that's it. It's like, and even like Kong's build up. Okay, we get some close-ups of his face, and then always oh, there, like, oh, so it wasn't built up to that much. That was one thing that kind of struck me while I was watching it. We don't see Kong for a very, very long time. Half an hour, 45 minutes. Yeah, if to, not longer. It's a, it's a good run, long time. They build up to him. And I was thinking, watching it, like, always comparing it to Godzilla, of course. I'm like, it took a while, but I think it was still sooner than that when we saw Godzilla first time around. Yeah, Gojira, he shows up probably around... 20? Uh, yeah, I'd say like 25% of the way through. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, it's it's a little later in the game. Like, I'm starting to wonder, if, like, are we ever actually going to get to him? Yeah, which is... Which is kind of another problem I have with this. The pace is really, really off. Every scene seems like it's 10 to 15 minutes too long. Yeah, I mean, at first I was like, okay, this is sort of like... We're, we're kind of hearkening back to a simpler sort of adventure romance, and they're mm-hmm. trying to be simpler, but I'm like... Okay, we're going to focus more on the human characters. But uh, the sad thing is, uh, I wasn't really sure how to feel about a lot of the characters. Like, for instance, one thing I knew about this movie was that there was obviously kind of the environmental message where you've got Jeff Bridges is like, no, don't destroy the island, don't take the animal from its population, you can't be imperialist and just ruin these, you know, yeah. this tribe's life, essentially, their, their whole thing here. So... I mean, on one hand, I'm like, okay, so the the evil corporate business guy is evil and doesn't care, and he even has lines where he says, "I don't care what happens to the men," but then he clearly does in other scenes. And like, like for, it's like I said, the whole introduction to Jeff Bridges' character, ah, screw you, or like they, they should hate him, he should lock him up, but ah, whatever, you can photograph the thing, and I'll keep you here. Like he's sometimes he seems like he's not that bad of a guy, and other times he's literally a, he has a mustache. He's like a mustache twirling. Yeah. I, I think they were trying to portray him as like sort of this guy who's desperate not that competent and wants to like achieve something and get yeah. something but he's just really bad at it yeah he wants to slice the pie but he'll do almost anything to get and uh and i compared that to the uh director in the first movie because i i liked the handling of that because it wasn't exactly easy like all right he he's flawed he shouldn't have done what he did and it was more like a commentary of like humanity you know taking this thing out of the natural world and not knowing what they're dealing with pretty classic yeah whereas in this one i'm like it, it, like so he kind of gets his comeuppance and spoilers he gets killed kind of well before Kong gets taken out and it feels like so who's who's the lesson for here the guy the main guy learned his lesson and so but then when they get to the city the the mayor is I guess evil and the the some of the army guys are evil I'm like yeah it kind of adds an entirely new antagonist and like right in the last is, 20 minutes and I'm yeah. like I it felt really weird it did it really really did it's like so the, so the, so he killed the main guy we can just go to no no this is whole thing about Man, the New York society doesn't care about animals. And I'm just thinking how naive Jeff Bridges is. Oh, yeah, like, I'll tell you where he's going to be, but, uh, you know, you net him up. And you can tell, oh, yeah, the mayor's, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> we promise we'll just net him up. Like, are you really, Jeff? Like, yeah. I, I don't know. So, but I'll tell you, hopefully I won't forget some things. But I, the, I, I don't I don't want to sound too negative because there were things about it I liked. But there was just a lot of things that stuck out to me. And J- Jessica Lange... Um, I want to say here, I think she's a good actress, and I think she does well with the part here. But the character is dumb. As a post. As a post, and naive. And there was a moment when she first meets Kong, and I thought, okay, the innocent sweetness is going to carry him over. I'm like, okay, I guess that's fine. But then she cuts back, and she's just like, there's literally a scene where they're running away, and she's like, let's just stop and get a drink. Like, And Jeff is like, okay. like He, he literally abandons caring about Kong for 20 minutes. He's like, oh, well, yeah, maybe I can save him. I'll phone the mayor. Like, what? what? 
Like, it was weird. Like, we're, we're just, okay, I guess we escaped, so it's the Army's problem. Now, I'm sure they'll figure out something. Like, in most movies, Jeff Bridges would be like, okay, i got to save Kong and do what I can the yeah. whole thing instead of taking this break. And I get that he cares about her, but, yeah, she's so focused on, like, being an actress, which, from what I understand, was kind of, like, maybe been some commentary a little bit because apparently uh, I saw an interview with Jessica Lange and she was, uh, I guess, literally waitressing, trying to get a gig, and this was her first yeah. thing. And she's like, oh, well, you know. Being in the robotic arm was a lot more interesting than waitressing, so maybe there was something her of her yeah. channeling, like being a new actress in there, and she's like, I was saved by a movie, and like, she does a good job playing this kind of vapid, shallow, dumb, sweet girl. Yeah, like... But I didn't really like she's her. She's doing the best with what she has. I don't blame... I don't blame Lange. Lange is an incredibly talented actress, always was, always probably will be. Yeah. If anything i blame the script and i also blame dino de la rentis but that's a whole different rant we'll yeah get to in a minute here. and i guess the direction too a little bit but yeah the script some of the okay my biggest problem with the script like there there were some things like i said the uh some of the atmosphere we we, we could kind of um create in this movie mm -hmm. like like especially when they get to the island yeah some of the shots in the fog and when they recreate certain scenes mm -hmm. and there is some menace and some wonder and there is some good interplay between the cast but for me, uh, the movie kind of really loses its way once they capture Kong, and then it's just like, okay, we got to get to the end and do stuff. Yeah, there's a little too much buildup and not enough payoff to that buildup. Yeah, it's like with the fight. Like, okay, he, he breaks away. By the way, the most hilarious scene is when there's, oh, it's okay, he can't break out. It's, it's uh, like a, a federally stamped impossible cage to escape and cuts from him, like, literally crumbling it like nothing. I was going to say less... Literally seconds, he's already broken the shackles. Like, within seconds, and they keep cutting away, and every time they cut away, it looks like he's eaten the cage because more of it's disappeared. It's <laughs> like, it's like, it's unintentionally hilarious. But uh, also, one issue I have with the script, too, was that they started to be kind of cheeky. Like, oh, when I get to the island, because she likes horoscopes, I'm going to meet yeah. the biggest person I ever met. Or like, oh, man, what do you think that is? Some guy stumbling around in an ape suit? And I'm like, I I are we supposed to take this seriously or not? Yeah, yeah, and I think that's one of the biggest problems is there are times where it seems like this movie is trying to say something. Yeah. And then there are other times where all it seems to care about is being an escapist action movie. I can't even really say it's a family movie, which is also speaking to the tone, because there are scenes uh, where it's very goofy and silly and a lot of like really interesting and a lot of fun action sequences. And then there are other scenes that are really, really risque for a PG. Some of the scenes are very risque. Honestly, okay, I'll, I'll bring it back to a positive, though. When okay. the movie wants to sell an emotional point, uh, which I'll ask you a question to, because it's one of my biggest sort of conundrums with the movie. But what did work for me is, like I said, when they are doing something well and when they can hit those emotional points... Mm -hmm. Uh, they do the Twin Towers instead of the Empire State Building for him to yeah. climb up, um, which was f fairly well done. And I will say they do helicopters this time and possibly a flamethrowers in cinema episode. Didn't know about that. <laughs> maybe, maybe. They, they, that was new to me as that, well. I was yeah. like, oh, that was a surprise. Um, yeah, when, when they take Kong down and, and like they're shooting with machine guns and mm -hmm. there's blood squirting, I'm like, oh, this, oh, man, this is rough. Like, I feel bad. I, I do feel bad. It's sad. He, he falls down and it's the classic thing. And I'm like, man, this is brutal and kind of in some ways more of a downer ending than the first one yeah and like what is the moral here i'm not entirely sure because like i said is it her kind of getting comeuppance for always wanting to be a star and then she realizes maybe it's not always worth it because obviously yeah. you got the cameras you mm -hmm. know clicking on her one interview she's like leave me alone like it becomes more about the spectacle rather than the person which is similar to the themes in the first one and that that was an interesting theme to explore and i felt like I guess she learned her lesson, but she was supposed to be so innocent that I felt like, did she have to learn that lesson? Like, she didn't know any better. Yeah, and that's that's kind of where I saw the, the compare and contrast as I was, I was watching it, because one impression I was getting very, very early on was, okay, this is a super annoying character. Why did Fay Ray work? Fay Ray's character was oh. naive, mm -hmm. to varying degrees. Yeah. But for the most, but she was never, she was never pretentious. She was never full of herself. Or shallow. Or shallow. Or, she, or, and uh, she won she was kind of brought into it because she was a bit vulnerable, not because she was seeking stardom. Yes. 
there wasn't necessarily this this greedy mentality to it. And I think that's the thing. If she was dumb or sweet or naive, I'm fine with that. But she also seemed to be a bit shallow. And like even when she's a bit sad about everybody on the cruise getting killed, but she's more like ah whatever. You know, it's just that's uh, that's kind of a big thing this movie does. Like it'll flirt with more emotional tones and then we'll completely forget about them moments later. Yeah, it's like with the with the uh, the head of the agency, the head of the company. He he seems to flip flop on how he is a lot of the time. Yeah, I mean one thing that I've always been told very early on is whenever you're whenever you're setting up a, a movie, whenever you're writing a script or shooting a scene, uh, just starting out, you wanna make sure that within the first ten to fifteen minutes you wanna set the tone, you wanna give an idea of what the movie's gonna be like mm-hmm. and you wanna give us some reason to care. Definitely. This movie does not do that. This movie gives us a lot of setup. It feels like we're kind of just thrown into the middle of things. You know, one of my... I think what kind of sets up a a little bit of a tonal issue about how unsure we are about it is... I I did feel like there was kind of a tone, like it was this mysterious adventure thing. But as it goes along, it sort of changes. Even the title sequence. Like, I feel like that there honestly would have done better... If there was a classic intercut between titles or just blank titles, like, mm-hmm. would have been common. And then you could have just had King Kong, then go into the movie. When they start out in the dock, you've got Jeff, Jeff Bridges drunk, kind of, like, wandering on there. It's like, I'm not really sure. They start going away, and then King Kong, I'm like, is this a comedy? Is this a weird... What? What yeah. is that? It doesn't feel like a big monster I'm glad you brought that up, because... Okay, minor, minor opening spoiler for anyone who has not seen it, but it came from 1976, so... Spoilers and coming. <laughs> So King Kong dies at the end. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Sorry, sorry, everybody. No. But, so in the first, in in like the first five minutes, there's obviously this this dock, and we're seeing a bunch of people trying to get get us set up for things. We see uh, Jeff Bridges crawl into the crawl into the ship, and then all of a sudden we we get this shot of our uh, of our two of our two higher ups, and it's like, oh yeah, we got something big. Keep in mind, Joe. I I had never seen this before, so I had no idea. I really don't didn't know a whole lot about seventy six going in, other than the fact that hey. it was very very big for its time, and yeah. it's really the it's only confused. one that's outside of Son of Kong and King Kong Escapes, which are a little bit of a different story. That kind of has a direct ish sequel. Um, yes, which we have to talk about at some point because I basically some point. minor deviation. Hold your thought, but we have a couple ones we've decided we're gonna do for sure in this sequence. But apparently, there's a sequel to this one called King Kong Lives, which is hard to track down because the studios tried to bury it. I showed you the trailer; it's one you of the did. most amazing it's... trailers I've ever seen. I it's an experience. We'll say that like much. Like the trailer alone, doesn't it kind of make you want to see the movie? <laughs> well, it makes its tagline very, very apparent. He well, is not happy. Happy. He said they said that twice, and it's the zooming. It's, yes, it, the, and repeats for two solid minutes. Everybody. The, the sequel to this has one of the most ridiculous trailers ever. Like, please see this movie. It is good. We, we're Probably. trying to hype this to the point that we. Cannot possibly live up to it. Yes. We yeah. are trying to set this up as the greatest and best thing ever. Um, but I hope I didn't make you lose your thoughts. No, 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 no. <laughs> but getting back to where I was going with that, we see our two an- antagonistic figures who are just talking about what they're, what they're doing. They're like, oh, oh yeah, we've already got something big. So for, for a person who has not seen it but adores the 33, mm-hmm. likes the 2005, mm-hmm. I'm just thinking like, wait, 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 wait. Are you telling me King Kong 1976 starts out with them actually already capturing Kong? I believe, like, <laughs> do they just cut out an entire movie and just sort of shove us into the third act? That would have been different. Uh, <laughs> that's actually one of the things I liked about the movie, but okay. I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. Okay. But, and then all of a sudden, the, the opening credit sequence happens, and you get into the expo dump moment, and... They're just talking about, oh, yeah, we're trying to, like, oil. find more oil. I'm like, wow, wow, this was a lot of setup with no payoff. I, and I have to say, I, I guess in some... All right. I guess it's sort of kind of may, maybe realistic of a motivation, but I kept thinking you're going to go to some distant island that may not have ever been seen to try and drill oil. Like, aren't there other places? And honestly, instead of going out there to try and make a movie yeah, because you're a really ambitious filmmaker, I mean, I guess it works, but it's a little less interesting. Yeah, I mean, here's 
here's what I what I respect about that. Okay. The 33 is a classic. Sure. And I don't think anyone has really contested that. No. If you forgive the generalization. Pretty sure. But <laughs> let us know. <laughs> let us know. You're more than welcome to disagree. Most people but, like it to some degree. But the one thing I respect about the 76 is it very much tries to be its own thing. It doesn't I, yeah. necessarily uh, try to tread the same same road twice. No. And I I think it can be judged as a separate entity with that in mind. When we were deciding to do 76, I was a little worried you were. that it might be a little bit, okay, We're just well, it's going to have the exact again. same plot, the exact same beats. We're going to be talking about the exact same things. But no. No, no, not so much. And to varying degrees, at times, the environmental uh, subtext of the film actually does work. You know, I was worried that it was going to be too preachy, but it's not that preachy. Honestly, it doesn't get really preachy until the end. Where oh, you bastards don't kill him. <laughs> not only that, but the scene that really irritated me the most okay. is much like with the thirty three, they have the whole we're going to we're gonna exploit Kong for personal profit, uh-huh. we're gonna make a giant spectacle out of this. Yep, yep. What is the giant thing that they end up sending sending Jessica Lang's way acting as Acting this like mock stagey Beauty and the Beast scenario, they hide Kong under a giant gas pump. Oh yeah, I didn't realize that's what that was. <laughs> I'm just staring at the box. screen, going, "Really, really? This is the well, conclusion we're reaching." Well, like the the company they work for is like Petrolax, like petrol, yeah, very clearly oil, petrol, petrol <laughs> oil. Okay, yeah, and got it. Name got dropped it. their rivals. Okay, oil companies are bad, and to be honest, oil companies have done some bad things. So I understand. But uh, no, I I get the environmental message, and like I said, and and I think that when it hits the emotional beats, it's fine. I think the problem comes for me. Well, like I said, I think that the there's a couple minor issues, and first of all, Jeff Bridges' character—I don't know his name—and Jessica Lange, uh, her character. Yeah. Uh, first of all, Jack and Dwan. Jack and oh, very good. Jack, <laughs> oh, her name is Dwan. Let's talk about this, everybody. Uh, no, let's not. Let, I think that says it all. The worst name Dwan. in cinematic history. Quite possible. Dwan? That's right. I wanted a memorable name. <laughs> Lady, I promise you it's not Dwan. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, first of all, uh, harkening, harkening back to maybe the uh, the, the sensibilities, themes, and, and ideas of the first movie, mm-hmm. the romance was, you know, kind of simple, but it was, it was effective. Yeah. I, I bought it. Do you buy their romance in this? Maybe her with him, but do you buy him with her? Well, what I liked about the first one was it wasn't it wasn't as instantaneous. No, it there was some growing pains. Woman. There was a yeah, it was. <laughs> you can't be on a boat. Definitely on a little bit of a. This was a product of its time. But that but, one was nice. He got soft yeah, about but it. there was an arc there. There, there was. was there was growing pains. There was. There were some disagreements. There was some buildup, mm-hmm. and then you sort of saw them earn that moment where they actually learned to care for each other. Definitely. This one is more. We're introduced to her. She's up. She's a gorgeous woman, mm-hmm. and then we get uh, to the island. There's some conflict, and then he's... we kind of seem to get that conflict resolved. And okay, now we're already we're we're infatuated with each other and can't yeah. tear each other apart. And I'm like, okay, I, I guess. But I, that was one issue. My other issue was, and now that we're talking about it, I guess I feel a little better about it, was the the leader of the company. I think what they were trying to do was sort of model it after the the director from the first movie in the sense that he is a person. Um, and I, I was kind of wondering if it was bad writing, it was bad direction. But I think that the actor, at the very least, was trying to play it as, you know, I am ambitious, maybe I'm a little greedy, maybe I don't always care, but I, I think I'm just so blinded by the goal. Because like he clearly does care for people he Mm -hmm. does wants what's best he wants to bring people riches he wants to you know he wants to make a profit get fame but he isn't trying to gear people he's not like 100 percent evil no he's just kind of he's done terrible things but he's not necessarily evil i'd say he's more bumbling than anything yes I, i would agree with that um and then okay that was my other issue but i'm more okay with that now and i think the the biggest thing is this okay and I want to ask you, go on, because uh, I'm not 100 percent sure I feel about it. All right. Like I said, I, I Kong in the first movie is really interesting because he is he's really just an animal. He's a simple creature. He's monstrous, but he might have do a lot of things unintentionally. It's hard to say. And he is kind of scary, but he's also kind of adorable. I, I was gonna say Kong in the first movie is kind of like 
a little kid in a giant animal. Innocent. Yes. And I think that they kind of try and portray him that way in this, but I want to say that Kong is a little... He ranges from being a little more frightening to actually much more sympathetic, and I I wasn't sure how I felt about how I was supposed to feel about Kong until the end of the movie. I, I really wasn't sure how they were using him. Yeah, they kind of go in a bunch of different directions with him. It, he feels more in this one... If 33 is more like a naive child, mm -hmm. 76 is more like a moody teenager. He has yeah. moments where he does legitimately show empathy and caring mm -hmm. and wants wants to just live his life. Mm -hmm. But you also get moments where he is... What's the PG way of putting this? A little bit... Uh... Uh, pushy. Let, let's say <laughs> intrigued at Dwan, if well, we're going to go there. Well, that's actually but, another issue I had was like, okay, I, I guess they're a humanoid, but he's a giant ape. Where does he think this is going to go? <laughs> By the way, yeah, they do They do kind of, he, I mean, I don't know, I'm not exactly sure. I guess it's supposed to be cute. Okay, they clearly do some very sexual things in this and there where they, he kind of like pokes her shirt and she it comes down and she has to cover up quick. Like, yeah. okay, he's intrigued by this, which I guess is true to the original. She's pretty, I like her, but... They, they. I guess one of the interesting subtexts that I don't know. I mean, it's pretty obvious, but they're playing a bit with gender roles and the role of women. Like the, some of the women, kind some of the men on the boat, kind of sort of seem attached to her and want to defend her. And it almost seems like they're going to fight for, her, but then they don't. And yeah. then Kong is clearly seeing her as a sexual object, and it's like that was kind of there with the Beauty and the Beast theme in the first one, but. They definitely try to make it a little more risque, and it, it feels like a 70s movie in a lot of ways. Yes, very, very much so. Like, to the point that I'm not really sure who this movie's for. It's not a kid's movie. It's, it's not a kid's movie. The first one wasn't really either, but it at least felt like it knew its audience. True. Like, yes, you could probably take a 10-year-old to 1933 King Kong, but probably an older audience is going to get more out of it. I agree. I think that it's, it's definitely dealing with some bigger themes... Uh, 76, it's like you could take a kid, but you probably want to, like... I would say if you <laughs> if a little kid was at the ending... Uh, I mean, if King Kong would have probably made me very sad as a kid, the 33 version, this one might have really mortified me because cause he goes out brutally. I, I was going to say, this movie gets extremely violent at times. Yeah, like, the, it does a little bit, but... But, man, Kong, with, with all the blood splatter and the squibs, like, he... He really goes down he, bad. It's probably the most gruesome Kong death. I'm not going to front. From the ones I've seen, it definitely is. And it's just like, man, I that is a bit much. And I, I did like, the, to give her a little bit of credit, the Dwan character does does grow a bit. It's never going to get old. It's but. terrible. Her character does grow a bit because I do like that she does, I don't know how well it's handled, but she does kind of have this affection and care about Kong, like does get that he's not trying to hurt her, he's trying to protect her, and that's what he's motivated by. And she realizes, oh... The only thing keeping them from continuing to shoot you is holding me, you know, hold yeah. me, keep me close, you don't put me down. And she's like, no, and he's like, no, no. It's almost like in that moment, Kong kind of knows he's doomed and wants her safe because yeah. that's his whole motivation. And I'm like, that is tragic. Which is what he kind of reaches the same conclusion at in the 33 one as well. Mm -hmm. Like, if there's no real way I'm going to get out of this alive, so I might as well make sure that you're safe. And I thought that was done pretty effectively. It was sad. Yeah, uh, it, it definitely hits. Like, the one thing I can say about both versions is the the final building climax has has emotional heft to it. Mm -hmm. um, both hit differently for very uh, different for reasons. very different reasons. I'm just trying to find another word there. I apologize. But, for varied reasons, you know. Yeah, for there we go. There you go. <laughs> but I, I that's one thing I got to give it points for is it tries to do its its own thing. It tries to find ways to tell this story and make it. Make the themes more universal. King Kong is very much, if you if you really boiled it down, it's kind of a morality tale about about greed. Mm -hmm. You could argue that uh, it's kind of the same way that uh, Gojir uh, started out as a giant morality tale about nuclear. Yeah, war about and... pretty much uh, trying to trying to cut to the chase simply because you think it's more advantageous. That remorse. Yeah. Uh, from from uh, making a spontaneous decision. I, I, yeah, being careful with the power you kind of mess with, which is kind of just a, with Kong or really with any science fiction theme, it's a very common trope to use of, like, let's be careful how far we go without looking into it. Exactly. Which is which is great um, and uh, kind of makes me realize that uh, 
it, I guess Godzilla is sort of an anti-war film in a way too. I guess absolutely, uh, but not to that'll be a different podcast for sure. <laughs> but got to stay focused on Kong. Yes, but, but the point is, uh, all right. Um, well, uh, did you know, I did like they did recreate some scenes where they have the classic. They're on the log and he tries to move and shake them off. Uh, which oh by the that, way, man that that new interpretation did not. <laughs> Age no, well. because they that fall. seems rough. Well, first of all, they fall into blue screen again, which is kind of bad. But the worst part about it is some of the guys clearly aren't shaking off; they just jump off because they get. Yeah, and I'm like, it's like okay, well, how do we get this going to to make it look like okay, we've got casualties? And I kept getting excited because okay, we're already right through this sequence, and oh, they're gonna fall into a pit and fight some giant insects. Something? No, they're just no. gonna fall. I'm like, yep, they're come dead. On, and that's, and I mean, I know that's, I mean, I don't want to say that's a minor thing, but like there are some thematic issues and, and character and story issues, but. Some of the, that is the biggest thing is the effects with Kong are pretty decent, but I wanted to see him fight more stuff, and I guess they just thought that because they were just doing the suit stuff, trying to limit the animatronics, that they didn't want to match it with stop motion. I don't, I don't know. The the snake was fine. Yeah, the snake was an interesting fight scene. Also, very very violent. He very yeah he does. That's right when he rips the jaw and blood comes out. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. But yeah. that's the coolest kill. The only kill. Yeah, in the movie. like the. A big problem with this movie is it's incredibly stop and go. There, are, there are moments that get really, really interesting, and then you'll have so many just sort of like, okay, here's everyone else kind of doing their own thing. Here's, yeah. here's a bunch of people back on land. Here's them back on the island. Well, it's a lot of oh, here's Kong. Uh, here, uh, here's something else. Kong's yeah. here. I know he's not. Like, yeah. uh, like the show. Okay, like the when he's in the, on the ship. You yes. think that's gonna build up to something? It doesn't. It's over. Yeah, like there's this interesting <laughs> kind of dynamic of okay, we've got Kong. It's actually an interesting kind of thing that they do that the 33 version didn't do, where we actually see that it was not just an easy okay, Kong's on the ship, K- Kong's locked up. It was just an easy to do, 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 do back to America. Mm-hmm. Oh no. no, 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 no. Yeah, he actually was banging up the ship. Yeah, actually, and it's a cool set piece. The problem is it's over in about five minutes. Maybe even at that. Yeah. Also, another minor issue. I feel like. I feel like it's like I said when I said that this thing is trying to do like more, but it's somehow a little bit less. Like, for instance, one of the big issues for me was how Kong got captured. Like at the first one, they throw like the gas grenades. It's creative. It's this whole chase sequence. Yeah. They just pretty much get him back to the main village, and then they trick him into falling into a not that deep hole, and then he's out. Yeah. He's knocked out. Like really. So yeah, and that was clearly I guess to save special effects because I mean okay, this is a bigger scope thing. We got some bigger actors, but then I'm thinking. I'm pretty sure those special effects in 33 were took time and were difficult and weren't cheap. So, no. so I'm kind of like the movie. Why are feels, we cutting corners here? Yeah, it feels more expensive and less expensive in some ways, and that it's very interesting. Which does that tie into the Dino thing you were hinting at? Yeah, like we sort of discussed this a little bit before we we decided to record tonight. Dino De Laurentiis produced this. Obviously, yeah. the man behind Flash Gordon, among many many other projects, and one of my favorites, Dune. <laughs> and Dune, for better or for worse. Yeah, but, which I think uh, some of the same issues come up. Yeah, and the, good old Flash Gordon. <laughs> good old Flash. And the impression I always got from Dino De Laurentiis as a as a producer was the man cared less about the the subtext and more about the the importance of having fun. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that we're kind of losing sight of in. The 2010s and especially the 2020s. Oh, so you're actually kind of paying him a little bit of a compliment too. Uh, a, a little bit, I think. I think Dino De Laurentiis is a is a man with good ideas, but not necessarily the best execution. Like mm-hmm. he wants fun movies. He wants things that have replay value. He wants to get people in seats. And I, in a weird way, I respect that. Man, the guy's made a lot of movies too. He has. He has absolutely made a lot of movies. He goes back a ways. But the problem is, bec- because of that. He tries a lot of different things to make it seem fun and doesn't really ask if it works. The The reason 33, and I would even argue 2005, work more effectively is there's heft, there's stakes, you care, you're invested. Mm-hmm. And 76, you kind of care, but he's so focused on the spectacle. He's so focused on here are these, here are these uh, goofy or, or risque moments that are in, that can be intriguing. Other times, just I'm gonna just 
put it bluntly, inappropriate. But maybe a few of them. But I agree with that. I think that based on Dune and Flash Gordon and a couple of his big, big pictures, he is definitely about pushing the spectacle. Like, this is the cool visual. This is the idea, like the stakes. Like, there is... There is a world, and you kind of feel that with Colin. Like you do feel like you are kind of going somewhere off, and there's some magic to it. That's one thing that that is one thing I will absolutely say is a is a positive for this one. The set design is oh, really really the, impressive. The village I thought was great. The costumes I loved that when they went to the tribe. The costumes are great. I love the fog effects. The fog was... And it's funny. They they used a lot of uh, fog machines, but kind of working it out with the oil. It really works for the atmosphere. It's got this old school Hollywood kind of effect, but yes. it's fun. It's very fun. Yeah, yeah, like... When we were building up to that, I was like, oh man, this is going to be great. And then we finally make it through the fog. I'm like, okay... Uh, we're gonna get that again. Is it, is this gonna be a, more of a thing? Are we gonna see a little bit more about this? Because oh, all right, they talk about this for an incredibly long time at the start. The fog's exactly the same as it was forty years ago, if not larger. Whoa. And and it's a thing, and it's an interesting set piece, and then nothing for the rest of the movie. Well, I guess they do kind. Of, all right, there is one other part where they do bring the fog back. There's a little bit of it at night. But there's probably some some environmental symbolism where, of course, you know, Kong falls into that hole, which was yeah. kind of silly. And then he's he raises his arm up through the fog because they got to conceal the effect. And then it mm. kind of goes back down, and all the villagers are like, "Oh." And I also thought that was an interesting line about how, basically, by of course sticking their nose in and removing this creature from his natural habitat, they're also messing with this important piece of these people's culture. Like, oh yeah, you think you did them a favor? No, like that was their their religion, their entire. Yeah. Society was you have literally it. taken a piece of them. You've taken a piece of them. They're all going to be like drunk burnouts now. Like you know, it's just like that's that probably hits hard for imperialistic issues. Just kind of exactly. pushing pushing in your culture into other uh, lesser ones, just in terms of their development, and then you know not really caring about the consequences. So you know, I thought that was a quick line that was pretty hard hitting, and but like I said, not overly preachy. They don't bang their head over it too much. No, no, the environmental stuff is actually handled pretty well with. With a few exceptions. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of necessary for this. I think what works in regards to making this its own thing is it really shows you how how well King Kong has aged over time. And I think it's mm -hmm. because we can relate to that idea of greed corrupting. Greed me leading good people to make terrible decisions. No doubt. Greed making us making us feel exploited or ending up uh, being exploited mm -hmm. for someone else's gain and ruining lives because of that. No, it's definitely a consistent theme. And that's one of the great things uh, about a lot of these giant monster movies is they, you know, like any other great story, you can use them as an allegory for all kinds of commentary. Um, like I said, it was a bit interesting that Kong hasn't been used quite as much. But when he... And I, I'm actually very excited to talk about the Peter Jackson one again because I know that's more of a closer remake to the original, but I, I kind of wonder what else they'd say that's different because I honestly forget some of the details. Yeah, I mean, Peter Jackson's does kind of his own thing. He tells the same story. It's set, obviously, in the same time as, that was as the 33. Which, of contemporary, yeah. Yeah, um, 76 was more present day. Mm -hmm. Well, present day per 76. Per 76. <laughs> which is different. But I think a lot of... The Peter Jackson King Kong was kind of in the vein of what we see with, if you'll forgive the, if you'll forgive the comparison, uh -oh. um, kind of like a more advanced version of what we've seen with a lot of the old Star Trek episodes. Oh no! Not necessarily we're trying to rewrite the formula, but we're trying to up the ante with special effects and try and find what ways to do things on a higher level that we couldn't do in 1933. And that's yeah. sort of why I, I respect and I think it doesn't necessarily deserve the the bashing that it that it gets. Is it a long movie? Yes. Yeah. Although I gotta say, it keeps moving. And I don't want to get too far away from 76. No. But in, in contrast to 76, I think this one has moments that are really, really engaging and then we'll have other moments where you're where you feel entirely dejected for 20, 30 minutes yeah, or there's a, or even sometimes just kind of, kind of in a little bit of a slog due to repetition. We find new set piece. We cut back to. It's kind of like Kong Kong sub subplot back at back at the ship subplot, and then air quotes Skull Island subplot. Okay, and just sort of like bouncing between the between the three. 
That is true. There, it does kind of bounce around a little bit. Yeah, it's like okay, we found new set piece. What's Jessica Lange doing? Okay, <laughs> there's a there's an interesting little thing interaction with Kong, or there's a fight scene. And you don't like the waterfall scene where he makes her less dirty. <laughs> Hey, you know what? To give them credit, I thought I was thinking, oh no, it's going to be see through. But you never see it. Her, her, she's no. got like a bathing suit on. No. no. It's fine. And then, <laughs> and then the ship thing, it's like, okay, you're hoping there's a little bit more moral ambiance. But instead, it's like, oh, get him, because we can make money off of this. Yeah, there's was, an opportunity here. It's a bit quick. And I, and I was even agreeing with what Odo from Star Trek, actually, the, uh, the, uh, the scientist guy, was like, uh, he was like, really? Like, you promised the company oil, which is probably like who knows how many decades of billions and billions of dollars of profit with, oh, I'm going to bring them a giant monkey and then do like a, a theater stage production tour, and that's going to yeah, be the same Yeah, I, I, I search for oil, and I end up P.T. Barnum. I mean, like, okay, I'm sure that's an interesting profit, but you work for an oil company, and okay, spinning it into a marketing gimmick is fine, but is it still going to equal like who knows how many years of profits through actual oil? Uh, would the company go for that? Apparently they did, but I don't know. I guess fine. I guess that's cool. We'll we'll let you keep working for us for a bit, or maybe who knows? He just decided to do his own thing. Yeah, I thought I'm glad I wasn't the only one who thought that was a little weird. But <laughs> at the same so time, it it kind of still falls in line with that with that concept of greed of trying to find a way to exploit an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And goodness knows if there's a way to make money, it's giving people some sort of spectacle. And True. this one made a made a ton of money. It uh, even went even further with TV when they made an entirely new cut. <laughs> uh, interesting little fact: the the theatrical that I think we both watched was about two uh, one hundred thirty four minutes, about two hours fourteen minute, minutes. If my math is good, yeah, I think that's the one I watched. The TV cut, which it was meant to kind of be more family entertainment, mm-hmm. I thought this was a really interesting idea. Was uh, it was uh, a three hour cut. Um, they they cut down some of the more risque scenes. They cut down a, l- a little bit more of the blood. There's alternate scenes. Okay. And uh, it was run across two nights. So you oh. get the first hour and a half. The first night you get the second half the next night. What's up with Dino and his make it a TV deal extra long version? It's doing again. He must be like a consistent. Exactly. But hey, that's kind of a good way to market it. You can show it a different way. And it worked pretty well. I mean, it's definitely got a fan base and I was doing a little bit of homework because okay. I didn't realize that that uh, this even had a different cut. I'm, as you as you have known for a long time mm-hmm. behind the scenes, I, I am definitely a director's cut nerd. And You are a big fan of director's cut? I, I believe in finding the like the, vi- the original in, intention. Because sure. sometimes we'll see things that come out and they are studio essentially a studio hack jobs. Interference, yeah. And we don't get to see what this was supposed to be. And I think there's a lot of movies that end up actually quite good that just get mutilated into something they aren't supposed to be. In this case, was the TV cut the director's true vision, or is it just the extended I cut I think it for was more... Studio? I was trying to find out if it was an improvement, if it was something different. You can get it. Uh, oh. Interesting little fact, um, they released an updated edition earlier this year that contains both. Oh. Um, so... But for the most part, it just sounds like, hey, if you want to see extra footage that didn't make it into this, I think they said the prologue's a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. Some There's uh, some change in the scenes. Uh, the format's a little different. Okay. But there's a little bit more context behind everything, but it's a it's a different tone. It's a little bit more family-friendly. Okay. Um, I don't have any real interest in seeking it out just because I didn't like the theatrical version that much. Eh. Um, it's not a bad movie. If you like King Kong and you want to see a different interpretation on it mm-hmm. that that kind of does some interesting things, it's not necessarily it's not necessarily a don't watch this ever. It's no. more of a watch it once, make of it what you will and and go away. It's kind of eh. it's kind of why I I I don't like when we have a when we have something in popular culture that's a little bit more polarizing, like say Last Jedi, um, like Crimes of Grindelwald or what have you, oh yeah, <laughs> that that people are either very, oh this is this is garbage, don't ever watch it, or it's so no, no no no, <laughs> like watch it, form your own opinions. Sure. Don't am I saying am I saying you should you should shell out your hours to every single thing that you see? No, but this is worth watching just to sort of. Uh, find the talking points, and that's sort of what I appreciate about this. This wasn't this wasn't as cut and dry as I thought it was going to no, be. No, interesting, interesting conversations. For, yeah. for sure. 
And uh, you know what? You actually beat me to the punch because I was trying to get us to wrap up. And I was like, well, I wanted to ask you, like, if you went like uh, the King Kong original, like, do you think this is worth seeing? And you answered the question. Yeah. And you, you really, you really like, beat me. Like, that was my last question to ask him. Like, yeah, and I'm pretty much with you. I agree. I didn't really love it. I have very mixed feelings about it. But I do think that it's worth a watch. It does some interesting things. And if you do like the character and the original, I think it's still worth seeing. Yeah, I mean, listeners... Don't get me wrong. This movie has flaws, and but that being said, don't treat the fl- the many many flaws we're we're mentioning we as are bringing up a lot. <laughs> complete complete deal breakers because no, they're not. They're no, not. It's a I, perfectly watchable movie. I would say that this movie is definitely interesting. Yeah, like it's not bad. No, it's, it's not, not bad. awful. No, it's not bad. I can't call it good, but it's not bad. And it, there are moments where it's on the line there's for me. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's it's not without flaws, and the flaws are definitely a a big a big uh, issue. Yeah, detriment. Yeah, yeah, detriment is probably the better word there. <laughs> but but it still has things that are are unique that it mm-hmm. that really helps showcase why I think Kong keeps coming back into the American consciousness. Definitely. And I think I think it's and I think if you appreciate the original story. You'll you'll appreciate that element of this one. I agree. I, I think there's definitely something you can get out of it, um, and I really cannot think of anything else to really talk about with seventy six. But we we hit our, our mark. We try to aim for, so I'm happy about that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I believe we're gonna do Peter Jackson's next time, and we'll probably continue on with I think King Kong Escapes if we can find it, um, and then I know that. Around around the time we probably record the new uh, King Kong versus Godzilla should probably be out, so I'm sure we'll talk about that a little. <laughs> Definitely. And then we'll determine uh, whether we'll do Kong or uh, go in a couple other directions. We've got some other things uh, lined up, but if anybody listens and wants us to check out another kaiju movie of specific type, please don't be shy. Just let us know. But uh, I'm gonna say uh, farewell to everybody, Justin. All right, take it easy, everyone. See you next time. All right, bye bye.